Okay, so welcome back. First day, session number three. We have been seeing on the first session a bit, a, a demo by Marta explaining everything about the, the application, the Android application. On the second session, we have been seeing a bit more the concept of why are we using, well, first of all, the DHIS2 uh, model of the package we're gonna, <coughs> sorry, we're gonna be using during this week. And then we explain how this was mapped to DHIS2. And now we are starting to get our hands dirty. So we have 45 minutes. And in this uh, session, you are already gonna be doing some stuff on the system. You will be given access to the server and you will have to start performing some changes that afterwards you're gonna be seeing on your Android device. Important to know is that this session, so we have an exercise which we have divided in two sessions. So we have this session now and then 10 or 15 minutes break and then we have another session. And then in that session, you will have to use your Android device to see the changes you have made on the server. So two parts, first server, second Android. I'm gonna be talking about the server and you probably will be asking me here on Slack, everywhere, how can I access the server? Please be patient. I'm gonna share the credentials later on on Slack. So when I finish talking, because I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. And I know if I give you the access, you will be accessing and you will not be listening to me. So please wait for the next, I'm gonna give you 20 minutes of uh, quick introduction. And then I'll share the credentials, I'll share the URL of the server and you can start playing. Each of you will be given two, one, one account, but we are not giving you specifically to each of you. So we, I will be sharing a spreadsheet with your name, your admin password, your Android password, and the specific organization unit you have to use for this training. Please use only the one you have been assigned, assigned, sorry. Do not use, because you will have access. So one of the first things we will ask you is to change the, the password, but please stay, stick to what we have given you and don't mess with other people's system. We know, it's not the ideal way of doing things, but we don't have a capacity to build one server for each of you. So we have a server with different programs and you have access to specific programs. But at the beginning, you will be given the list of users and here you can misuse it if you want. Let's see. Also important to know that this session does not contain an exercise you have to submit. So it does not mean you don't have to follow this session. It's very important because this session, it's gonna be the foundation of all the exercise you will be doing during the next uh, days of the academy. So if you fail to do this session or this exercise properly, you will not be able to continue with the next exercises. Let's say we are building blocks and this is the foundation, the base block where we are gonna start, where we're starting from before putting the other ones. So not sufficient, but still you have to follow, okay? So by the end of the session, 45 minutes, let's say I'm gonna be talking for 10, 20 max. You should be able to log in the server with your credentials. You can explore the program. I was telling you in the session before that we have built this program from the WHO recommendation. You can tweak it according to your needs or wishes. And you will set up the mobile user. This is the mobile user that we will be using in the next session. So having said this, let me, yeah, start with this. One second, I'm gonna put this like this. So yes, exactly. Uh, I told you already, but please listen to me before you start playing with it. You're having time afterwards. Again, we have divided all the sessions of the academy in a bit of theory and then practice. We give you time after the theory for you to practice. So don't worry, you're gonna have time to do everything I'm trying to explain. So this is the server you're gonna be accessing to, academy.android.dhis2. And when you access, you're gonna find this typical, most of you have already seen this before. 
the DHIS2 default login screen might be that someone has put already a flag. If that's the case, it doesn't matter. But here you will have to put your username and your password. This I'm gonna share uh, now, in, well, now in the next, uh, when I finish talking in Slack, so you will be uh, given the two users. If you have problems with any of this, please use Slack to tag me or well, in the in the questions say, hey, I'm having issues with access to the server and we'll see what's going on. You should not have access, you should have access, we have tested it, but just in case something went wrong. And the password, the first thing you have to do is change the password. And this is one of the things that we are going to follow during the whole training. We will be talking on the last day about security in Android, uh, well, in DHIS2 and specifically in Android. And we will be trying to follow best security practices. In any case, we have already not followed the proper security practices because we have not, we should not share what we're gonna be doing. It's a master file with a lot of passwords, but the thing is very complicated logistically to send you each of you the password independently. So because we're not doing this right, please fix it for us. So the first thing you do is when you access the server with your admin account, change the password. Like this, nobody can mess with your exercises, with your uh, programs, etc. So access the system. When I give you the, the credentials and the first thing is change the password. Most of you should know how to change the password. If you don't know how to change the password, it's quite easy. Just once you have access, go here. On the upper right corner, you will have your initials. I think for you it's gonna be SA, so a student admin, if I'm not mistaken. And here, if you go to account, you will be able to change these things. So for example, you can put the old password that you have to provide from the firewall chain and then the new password. You know that in DHIS2, you need to provide uh, lowercase, uh, capitals, uh, number, and a uh, special character. This is the four things that your password have must contain. And I think maybe six or eight characters, I'm not very sure about it. But well, if you put the password and it's not valid, it will tell you that it's not valid and you have to put a valid one. But please do this, the first thing you do, I'm gonna say it again when, once I share the password list, but uh, please remember this. So <clears throat> when I give you access to the server, you know how to use, I mean, most of you should have followed a tracker training before coming to this academy, and you know how to reach these programs. So basically by going up here to the list of applications, uh, so I think you're not seeing my, yeah. So if you go go here, you should be able to see all the applications and by going there to maintenance, you will see a list of programs. Here, you should see only one program. The reason you see more here is because I'm using my account which has a little bit more credentials than yours. But here, for example, if you have given, given the student 125, you will find here ST125. ST comes from a student, so you will have ST125 COVID-19 case based surveillance. Okay. And what we ask you to do is to start exploring this program. If you have set up a tracker program before, you know that you have different things here. If I go back to the presentation before, you remember I was talking about enrollment, where you have to put the attributes. You can see here, then we have program stages, some of the repeatable. So explore a little bit the systems to see how this program is, if you have never played with a COVID-19 program before. And if you have downloaded the 1.2 metadata navigation file, you will see that what you see on the screen is what you see, I mean, what you see on this ISU is what you see on the file. Imagine at one point you decide to remove some attributes because you don't want to collect these attributes. So what you can do is you could come here to the attribute list, remove those attributes, and then you could come to your uh, doc file, remove them, so it's matching. And like this, you can understand well from this piece of paper what have you set up, and then you see this changes reflected on Android when we access it. Uh, when you're setting the attributes, as I'm saying now, uh, you will see here, I don't know how is the problem because I don't know by heart, but there are things that you can choose to be displaying the list 
you can make mandatory the attributes. You can uh, allow dates in the future in case it's a specific type of date uh, attribute. And then you have it searchable in case you want to have a searchable and then the render data. These things basically by defining these different uh, checks, you will see that it has an impact on how Android displays the thing. For example, if, and I'm gonna go to searchable, if I mark, for example, age at searchable on my Android device, the same way as it could be in this issue, but I'm gonna focus my uh, session on Android. You will see that here, when I go to Android, here I will find the age attribute as searchable. This is probably not very convenient because it's very unlikely that I'm gonna be using age as a searchable field, but if you decide to use it because you want, it's up to you. I'm going now to this one, displaying list. When you access the program, as Marta was doing in the first session, you will have a list of TIs. At these TIs, you will see, I mean, this under the screen is quite small, but we try to fit as much information as possible. So what will be seen there on your Android TI list is, uh, this is, this is uh, there's a typo here. Basically there's three plus one attributes will be displayed. So, and the first ones. So for example, if, if I would have marked here age, country of origin and date of birth as the first ones, as displaying list, even though there's another one here, this will not be shown in the TI list. I'm not showing here the TI list, but uh, it's something that I want you to play with so you see the differences. Is the things that are you gonna see in the little boxes of the TI list. And we're putting plus one because if there is an attribute of the type image that you're going to be using, usually this is gonna be a picture of the patient of the COVID surveillance case. This is the picture that is gonna be displayed next as a round icon next to the TI list, well, on the left side of the TI list. So we put three plus one because it's three attributes. And in case there is an image, it's gonna be displaying also the image. However, if you would have two images, only the first one will be displayed. Why? Because Android doesn't know if you want to use the first second. So it's, okay, I'm assuming the first one you are using is the one you want to be displayed as the profile picture. And here I'm putting the rendering type is covered in another session. You will see this tomorrow, I think, in the visual configuration. We will have on the last day, some specific recommendations for Android. I, sorry, no, I, I have I have forgotten to, to mention something here. Some of you will ask or have already asked, maybe you have not found in documentation, but it's something that it's important to remark. We have some searchable attributes and you will see that when you access the TA, the, well, the program, you are forced to search before entering a new case. Some of you find this a bit annoying and you don't like it. You say, hey, why can I not uh, start putting inputting patients and go send them to the server? I need to search. Uh, just to let you know, the story of this is that at the beginning, Android application did not impose the searching before entering, but now it does. And the reason it does is because we found, and it was requested by, by different implementations, that if we don't do, do this, there, is, there can be a lot of duplicates in the system. So imagine you're gonna be in the page Jaime Bosque, so you want to input me. Instead of searching before, you will say, okay, new patient, Jaime Bosque, pa, 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 pa. you fill the information, then you send it to the server, and the server might complain this patient is already there. If you perform a search before, what Android does is like, we'll search locally. If you have internet connection, we'll also search on the server. And if it finds the patient in this case, because we're talking about persons, patients, it will say, hi, my boss is already present. You are asked to download it and then you can fill more information about it. So Android invoices searches because we were asked to do it, okay? to avoid duplicates, but it's not something that we decided to do. It was not like this in the beginning, but then it became like this because 
many people or many different implementations ask for it to avoid duplicates because if not, they have to perform some cleaning tasks in the system, etc. So, as I was saying, on Friday, we'll have a specific ses sessions on DHIS2 recommendations when going mobile, but some of the things we will recommend it's basically limit the amount. Well, Android by default, we download a specific data and these are numbers we have tweaked according to what we think are the base, well, the standard ones that try to balance performance with usability, with data overload, et cetera. So these are the ones you will see later on during the week, how you can change them if you want. But one of the things we found out that is likely to be one of the big problems is that when you create an Android user, you are not having in mind that this is an Android user and you have been using DHIS2 for months, years, decades, maybe even, and you are used to set the system, the user with maybe a lot of information and you don't realize that this has a big impact in Android. So here we're saying this is not a specific for Android, but the thing is in Android is gonna have a big impact in your either security and performance. So one of the things we asked you to do, and is the first exercise of the uh, session now, you will have to limit the scope, the programs and the organization unit that this Android user is gonna be using. So, in the spreadsheet that I will share later on, you will have been assigned one admin user, one Android user, and one organization unit. You need to limit the use of this user to the specific organization unit. If you don't do this, and this, again, we will explain later on, what's gonna happen is that Android, because the nature of being offline and how it might work in the future, blah, 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 blah. What happens is that Android says, okay, I'm gonna download everything that this user might need to use in the field. And if this user has been assigned to several organization units, we'll download 500 TIs per organization unit per program and 1000 events per organization unit per program. So if you have 10, multiply it this 10 times. Usually when you work with Android, you are very likely to have one user assigned to one specific organization unit. And this is what we're asking you to do in the exercise. So in order to do this, when you're, what you will have to do is first of all, you will have to change the password. You have changed the password of your Android user, sorry, of your admin user, but because you have also been assigned a mobile user, you will need to change the password of that user. Ideally, you would choose a different one from the admin because this is a good practice as well. You don't have to touch the roles because this is already uh, predefined by us, but what you need to do is you need to make sure you change the organization unit to the one you have been assigned and you can leave the whole country if you want for search. This does, does not have an impact on your, on your Android. Also, because we're gonna be working with assigning permissions by user group, make sure that on this mobile user, you add that user to the specific group. I'm gonna rephrase this if it's not very clear. Imagine that I have been assigned the student 125. So with my admin account, I will connect to the system. I will change the password of my admin user. Then I will access the user student or Android 125. I will change the password. I will not do anything with the role because it's done. I will go on the spreadsheet to see which is the organization unit that this 125 have been, has been assigned. I will do this and then I will add this group 125 to the user 125. This is explained again once in the end, but I wanted to go through it here again. <clears throat> uh, in your specific program, you will have one program per, per student here. Make sure you assign the program to the specific organization unit and that you assign it to the user group. Actually, this bug is not already present because we have updated the server last Friday. So feel free to assign this program either to the user or to the user group. We usually recommend doing this by user groups, but if you prefer to choose a user, directly, it's already fine. 
And now, sorry, one second. It is your turn. Uh, you have uh, 20 minutes, a bit more. If I'm not, yeah. You have now until one to work on the system. And I'm gonna leave this screen here. And I'm gonna be answering questions if you have or either on the chat or on Slack, but basically I'm gonna share now on Slack and I will put it here as well on the chat, the file where you can find your organization unit, your two users, etc. <clears throat> Sorry, let me open it. So that's it. Okay, so uh, let me go back to here. So what do you have to do in these 20 minutes you have left? A bit more. And actually then we will have the break. I will come back to, to I will come back to say this a bit later. But basically, what you need to do is this. I have already explained, but you need to make sure you set up your user properly. And then that your program is also configured properly. Uh, I'm gonna be asking you as well to, even, even though it says optional here, could be good if you can go to play with different searchable attributes, uh, because then if you remove the ones you have by default, and you put different ones, you will see in the next session, we're gonna be explaining how to connect with Android. You will see how it has an impact. And even though I'm, I will be showing you some of my slides containing the Android uh, screenshot, for you will be different because you have tricked the system in a different way. Feel free to play with whatever you want in the program. It's very unlikely you're gonna break it. So if you want to change the attributes of your program, change whatever you want, uh, in terms of displaying the order, the ones you want to display, the ones you want to collect or not collect, the ones you want to make searchable, et cetera, et cetera. And you will see in the next session when we explain Android how it has an impact. You can also see it already on the, on the DHIS2 web application, but I will be focusing on Android. So in order to make the videos a bit shorter, I'm gonna stop this recording because the session is explained. Basically, I've shared this uh, file on Slack and on the Zoom chat. I'll stop the recording, but I'm gonna be remaining here. I will remain here on the on the I mean on the on the Zoom. So so I'll be here answering questions in case you have you might have or in case in case you have problems with your with the with the exercise. Let me stop the recording.